whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd roll these things. They're rolling out on their own. I thought I'd roll them outside. So this is the uh, the drum that's obviously very rusty. So I taped up the, uh, the inner barrel there so we don't send a bunch of junk in there. And then I was just going to use, I'm just going to try a flapper disc on the old angle grinder and see if I can't clean it up a little bit. So we'll see how that turns out. Wait a minute. Why do you want that beer so bad? Because he's thirsty, dummy. pretty good. Oh, Amazon dropping something off. That's their backup beeper or is that their brakes rubbing? Yeah. Normally you see guys polishing the the front side of wheels and not the back. I'm probably the first guy to be doing that. But that freshened them up not too bad. Should be able to stop. Should be able to stop on these. Okay, only need to do that three more times. Okay, so I'm gonna try and work smarter and not harder. What I need to do now is to, I wanted to lay this over. Oh, these are heavy, stupid heavy. Lay this over and then put in the wheel seal. So lift this up and put it back on, on its bottom again. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, I, I was smart enough to number all the tires, one, two, three, four, all the way around, and then I, I numbered the, the hubs as well, or the spindles, and then I marked out the bearings. So I know which one goes where. So now what I'll do is give a little bit of brake clean in here. Oh. This trailer has just been way more work than I thought it was going to be. But it'll be cool when it's done. Bet your ass on that boy. Now we can put the front bearing in from the front, or uh, the, obviously the front bearing in from the front, Mark. And then we'll edit that out. Looks pretty good. Now, I went over to Fleet Brake and they were able to quickly Correlate the old removed seal to the new stem seal. Bit of an older number here. Stem code 2109. And it cross reference to this guy here. And it's a two piece seal. And essentially what that means is this is the this is the sealing surface here, and this goes on the spindle. And then that just slides over, the rubber part of it slides over and keeps the oil inside the hub to lubricate the bearings. Now, I should probably take these off of here, but the existing ones off the spindle, but they don't look damaged. I'll take another look just to make sure. 
but I think this should be fine to reuse. Now these seals, you're supposed to have a proper Stemco seal insertion tool, which is basically just this big ring and a big uh, rod, and you just smack it with a hammer and it just pushes it in evenly. Now if you don't, don't have that, which I don't, you can just use a hammer and a block of wood. Now, I can't remember if, well, I guess we should put the bearing in first before I get too far ahead of myself. Okay, you're supposed to pre-lube the bearing, so I'll just get some 7590. Uh, 8090, yeah, close enough. It'll work for this little bit. So I'm just gonna pre-lube the bearing. Now, some guys use grease. I don't like to mix grease and oil. And since this is a, uh, everything in here is gonna swim in oil, once we seal it up and put the hub on, then I'll fill it up from the, the center hub there to the fill mark, and that should have a nice little bath of oil for the inner and outer bearing. Okay, now, I should probably read the instructions because I can't remember if you're supposed to put sealant, RTB sealant on the outer diameter. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Step three, clearly the inner bearing, yeah, we did that. Apply a thin layer of number two sealant. Well, I don't know what that is, but I got some RTB. To the outer diameter of the seal and position the seal on the hub bore. Place the proper Semco installation tool. Yeah, and strike with a stark blow, a sharp blow. Okay, so we don't have that, but we do got some we got some sealant, so of course I need to cut the end. Something like that should work. Now, here's where the finesse comes in. Let's see if this works. Seal installation tool, my butt. Seated. Nice. Okay. Now I can use the chain pull and throw this thing back on its upright again. I can even suspend it. Okay. So, now what I'll do, I had that cap on there temporarily. When I was blowing out all the rust, I didn't want to have anything come through and then go in there. So I'll zip that out now. Maybe I'll set it on the ground. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Had a little bit of oil in there. Uh, that's okay. So now, I'll just leave these things out for now. Because what needs to happen now is I'll swing this into place and put it over the spindle, and then I put the, uh, the outer bearing on. And then I gotta set the set the lock nut. Make sure this doesn't fly off on the highway. Okay, so you get the idea. There's the spindle. I'm gonna leave that seal on there because I tested it out with one of the other one of the other seals. Oh, I'll get a little bit of brick clean, clean that up. <clears throat> Spend Saturdays working on my truck. Okay. So now what I want to make sure that I do though, is this rubber seal here, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there, just so it's not completely dry. That seal needs to go over this shoulder here. So I'm going to walk it on, the brake pads should kind of guide it a little bit so it won't be too far out, 
And when the spindle's far enough through there, I should be able to put on the outer bearing and then I can push it on and that, that final, that should hold it straight and then push it all the way on. But I am gonna suspend the weight with the chain fall. Let's see how this works. Again, the right way to do this would be to have the wheels off. That way you could just lift the, the drum on. Possible without the gantry. Okay, so I got the outer bearing here all oiled up. Now, oh, no, not down. Up. There it goes. Yeah, I like the love. Okay. Outer bearing. Okay. And then I'll get the lock nut. So it doesn't accidentally flop out of there. The, the big socket on my impact and drive it in that way. And I'll take this chain fall off because I need to spin it. Just if you can't put a tan of set on. While the wheels are connected. Okay. Now, the proper procedure for this is the inner lock nut goes to 200 foot pounds while you're turning. While you're turning it. Okay. All right, get my big old torque wrench out. I'm gonna set it for 200. There's 200. And I know an extension is not ideal, but I went up one size to the three quarter inch, or the one inch, I guess. So, I don't think that's going to twist that much, not on 200 foot pounds. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be turning the wheel hard. Come on now. Do it right. Oh. Yeah, I want to make sure you keep turning it while you're seating those bearings. Okay, 
So now, after you get 200 foot pounds, you back it off one turn. Try this, so now we're going to go to 50 foot pounds. Now, I don't believe you have to turn it because we've already seated the bearings at 200 foot pounds, so they're already locked in. Now we're just setting the right tension on the nut. Okay, there's 50, and then the last step on this is to back it off a quarter turn. Right there. Okay. Well, don't move it now, Mark. Where's my hammer? There it goes. Okay, so that is set proper. So now that should be, we'll double check with the, with the dial indicator, but it should be an uh, end play of one to five thou. So now what we need to do is put on the lock nut, and I need to check how much torque we need for that. Okay, so what I, what I read, at least the spec sheet that I have, is the torque that you put on the final lock nut depends on the size. So they say if it's less than two and five eighths of an inch, it's 200 to 300 foot pounds. And if it's greater than two and five eighths inch, uh, then it's 300 to 400 foot pounds. So this is a three and a quarter inch size nut for the outer lock nut. So that's greater than two and five eighths, obviously. So it's 300 to 400 foot pounds. So what should I do? Like, I kind of, I like having them locked and a little more on the safe side. So maybe 375, something like that. That sounds good to me. <clears throat> Let's do 375. Okay. Now, the way this works, this locking mechanism, is there's a little slot in the end of the spindle here. And it's going to go in like that, and hopefully it lines up. Now it doesn't quite. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I love my torque wrench. It doesn't quite line up with with the pin there. It's kind of right in the middle. So we went a quarter back. I guess we can go back just a touch more because I don't. Mm -hmm. This is always a tough one. Should you go back or should you go forward? I think we'll go back. There. Okay, that's locked in. And the outer nut on. Now I'll zip it in with the impact, whatever that is. Oh. Now we'll maybe go up to the second setting. That should put about 200 foot pounds on there. Now we'll go to the torque wrench. It's already 375 and hopefully rolling off the tire didn't screw it up too much. There we go. 375. Cool. All right, so now I'll get the old dial indicator. Did I loan that to Blake? I might not even have my dial indicator. Uh oh. All right, I guess what I can do, I'll see if Blake can run that over here for me because I would like to double check Oh, I'll get your nice new paint all greasy, Mark. I would like to double check that I do have the proper end play. That's just good, uh, that's just good practice. So what I will do is, I've still got three more to do. I'm gonna do exactly the same as you just watched. And then I'll just leave all the caps off. 
just leave all the caps off and then I can quickly check the end plate and then put the caps on and call it done. So I will leave that like that, catch all the oil drips and move on to number two. Okay, I finally got a, a mag base here. So let's see if we can't set this up. Uh, something like that. Okay, something like that. Okay. Camera closer so we can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we'll set it. I guess we could set it at zero. Well, we'll set it at 10. Okay. And then we'll just rock this back and forth and try and get as much clay out of it as we can. Yeah, and the most I see is about four. So again, one to five is what we're allowed. And that's four, so that's within tolerance. So it's always good to double check. I mean, typically when you follow the procedure, you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up in the range. But what's interesting though, is this one here, I actually had to, because the little nib was out at a quarter turn, so I had to turn it just a bit more to line up with one of those holes, yet it's still intolerant. So that'll help me sleep at night, and it's sure a heck of a lot better than what it was, because you remember a couple episodes ago, you could put a knee in this and click the whole thing. I mean, this whole mess is ready to fly right off of here. Okay, so, foam stretch, foam stretch. All right, I am so tired with oil dripping out of these hubs. It's finally gonna be the end of that. So I got new Stemco hub seals and a new gasket in there, so we'll, we'll zip these guys in. Probably check those with the ratchet just to make sure they're tight. Okay. That should be the end of the leaks. Now, to call this one officially finished, I need to pop this guy out and we'll fill that with oil. Okay, so. The low mark is the inner ring where it says add, and then the second ring there is full. So we'll fill it up so we get to that. So this is the nice fresh oil for those bearings to run in. So we'll do something like that, and then we'll just leave it. And I got one more wheel to put on, and then I got to check the End play on the other three, and then this thing can actually get pulled outside. Can't wait. something's going to take, but this tandem set really surprised me. That was a lot of Saturdays to get this done. Okay, those little bolts. Oil, oil everywhere. 
and do a good cleaning. All right. And that'll do it. The tandem set is officially done. Oh man. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, deserves a course. Uh, all right, well, like always, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching this garbage all the way to the end. I really appreciate the feedback. If you've got some thoughts about what I did right, what I did wrong, please type it in the comment section down below. If you want to hit the like button, that helps out old Twin Six because it gets the analytics going and gets the video out there to more people. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm going to wrap it up there. And uh, yeah, we'll get these tandems out of here, put the snowman truck back, and keep on trucking and finding something else to work on in the next episode. So with that, I'm going to bid you farewell. See you next week. And don't ever forget, if you got it, the trucker brought it. <laughs>